incredibly difficult to do just, just to launch. Like, let's talk about the FDA regulations and, and everything that you have to go through to, to launch a product. And I was like, you know what, like I did do a good job. So it's important to sometimes take a step back and give yourself a little bit of credit, but also understand that if you're doing this, like you really, you really have to have a, a, a kind of a strong mental state and make the decision that no matter what, if you love this product and it's good, you gotta keep going. At Founder, we're leading an educational revolution in training the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. In this series, we're talking to our own students to discover how they're building the businesses of their dreams. These are real everyday people who have made it happen. Now, before we jump in, our lawyers have told us to tell you this. Of course, we can't guarantee you'll have the results like some of our stories are about to share in the show. And as you know, with any business, it's a lot of hard work in addition to completing any online course. And with that said, welcome to From Zero to Founder. Hey everyone, Molly here. I'm the community manager for Founder Magazine and welcome to this series From Zero to Founder. Today we're talking to one of our Start and Scale students, Maura Ruiz, and she has successfully started not one, but two e-commerce stores. And it's a really, really inspirational journey and I'm very excited to talk to her today. So let's get to it. Thank you, Maura, for joining me today. It's super exciting to have you here and uh, have the chance to speak to you and everyone hear your story. I guess let's begin. If you would like to introduce yourself and just tell me a little bit about who you are and your business. Sure, so my name is Mara Ruiz. I live in Miami, Florida, and I am a pageant girl, model, turned entrepreneur. <laughs> my business is at ACV Gummy. It's an apple cider vinegar gummy. So it has, um, it is similar to some the apple cider vinegar gummies that you might have seen, but what makes mine different is that it's actually keto, sugar-free, and it's been sweetened with a proprietary blend of monk fruit and stevia. And I also sweetened it with monk fruit. So it's something that I think is really special and I've been getting a lot of really good feedback. So I'm super excited about it and excited to build the brand more. I'm very excited to speak to you today about it and hear more about your journey because it's quite an amazing effort, an amazing feat that you've gone to. But I guess bringing it back, you did mention you were a pageant model and things like that before you were an entrepreneur. Did you want to go into that and how, you know, how did you become an entrepreneur from something like pageant work? So I'm actually still a pageant girl. I'm the reigning Miss Global USA and I still professionally model. So I do those things kind of on the side, but I've always been an entrepreneur ever since I was little. I came across the Founders Start and Scale course and I had actually had two failed, two to three failed businesses before, depending on how you look at it. And I, you know, but I still felt like it was something that I was called to. So I think I was lacking framework. So when I found the Start and Scale course, I decided to take it and I kind of sat on it for, for like a year because I didn't really come up with in any good ideas. And then finally this one came to me and I just ran with it and it, you know, so far so good. <laughs> Definitely, I couldn't agree with you more. And it's great that you know, you, you've been triumphant and you came back to it after having those, what you might consider failed businesses. What do you think was the biggest learning curve from you know, having those failed businesses to now being so successful and um, you know, creating your own brand? I think the biggest learning curve that I had was it to me, you know, some people can look at a product and they can figure out numbers and they can make money and they can be very successful. Like maybe someone who does something like Amazon, but to me, in order for me to be super passionate about what I'm doing, I knew I had to invest a lot into marketing, into branding and into making something really special because, you know, for this product, I could have easily gone and white labeled the number one competitor on the market, but that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to create something special, something that I was proud of. I actually use these and they help me so much since I still model professionally. It's important for me to like control my appetite you know, not have a lot of bloating and just boost my immune system since I even travel sometimes internationally, sometimes to model. So this is actually a product that I take with me and that I love. I can't travel with a bottle of apple cider vinegar, but I can travel very easily with my gummies. So it was a product that I felt would help a lot of people. So those things inspire and push me to continue to build my brand. Amazing. And, you know, you mentioned how apple cider vinegar, it has kind of been a trend lately to, you know, have that to improve your health. What were some other, you know, maybe some blockers that you were having with traditional apple cider vinegar and what made you really want to pursue these new gummies? 
I, I've been, su I've always been super healthy and I tried to take apple cider vinegar and I just could not do it. I could not for the life of me do it. And I tried to hide it in smoothies. I tried to hide it in soups, like salads. I've tried anything, just the smell, the taste. I couldn't take it. Even, even though I knew how good it was for me, I couldn't do it. So I felt like a gummy was genius. It's, it's essentially all the benefits of an apple cider vinegar um you know shot but it has none of the yucky taste so you can take these easily i actually you know have trouble your customers always tell me they're like oh my god they taste just like candy i can't eat just one like they love the taste <laughs> but i'm like those are still vitamins like don't take more than four <laughs> in a day i actually take the full i take four a day i mean when it tastes so good you can't really stop and if they're doing good things for you then i can understand that'd be that hard to and fro with it but i guess also you mentioned how it's keto friendly, which is an amazing USP of your product. Was that your main difference when you wanted to create your ACV gummies? Yeah. I, so I, when I looked, cause I thought it was a brilliant idea. When I looked, there was nothing on the market for me. And I follow, I try to follow a ketogenic diet as much as I can, especially Monday through Friday. So I avoid sugar and I avoid carbs. And I looked at the number one competitor on the market and it was like seven grams of sugar and like four grams. I was like, I can't, I can't eat this. Like there's no way I could eat this. And I, I started to think of a way, I started to work with a manufacturer so we could formulate a way that I could make this product, but have it something that people were that are on a keto diet could also have. Amazing. And you mentioned the manufacturing process. Did you want to go into a little bit more about that? What were some challenges you maybe faced when going through creating your gummies? Very hard. <laughs> gummies are very difficult to make, especially something that's custom formulated. Like I said, if I would have white labeled, that would have been so much easier, but I wanted something made custom. So it was expensive and a certain, because of the con, because it's a custom formula, my gummy, in my opinion, is still not where I want it to be in terms of the, the, like the encasing and stuff like that. But, you know, you have to start somewhere, you have to start testing your product. So I did, when I first started, I did, you know, a small order. Uh, I worked with a manufacturer that would do it with me because a lot of the bigger ones, especially the ones here in the USA, they won't even work with you unless you're doing, you know, 19,000 units, which is, you know, roughly $80,000. And I certainly didn't have that. So I found a way around it, uh, but, but it was something that I was very determined to do. And even though it was difficult, I'm happy that I spent the extra time creating something great and that I'm proud of. I couldn't agree with you more. And I definitely think it's such a triumph because a lot of other people and people may be listening struggle finding manufacturers in general, and that could be a real blocker. How long did it take you to find a manufacturer that, you know, like you mentioned, could do the quantities that you were after? Was it a long journey or were you pretty lucky? It was, and I think I was, I think I was lucky because I had had familiar working with manufacturers overseas. I have familiar with people in Asia and India. So I have kind of those established connections with one of my other brands. So I knew exactly where to go. I knew where to be, where I was going to be comfortable. And then it was just a matter of kind of, I guess, rolling the dice and, and paying someone to formulate it and looking at reviews, figuring out, Hey, are these, are these guys going to be okay? And I would say it wasn't incredibly difficult, but the process was long. I will say that because we didn't get, get it quite right the first time we had to redo the sample. Um, and then I wanted something that they had never worked with before. So monk fruit that my manufacturer was like, we've never, we've never done this before. We can source it for you, but you're going to have to give us some time. So, you know, it was a process to get everything together, but I'm really happy with the end result. That's amazing. And I know your ingredients is the main difference within your product, as you have mentioned before. What are some other ingredients there and like, how is it actually beneficial to your health? So we also have vitamin B9, B12, and something that I think is really special is I added L-carnitine in it. And I always forget to mention this, but it's, it's so L-carnitine helps your body essentially convert food into energy. So, you know, if you can equate that to it helps your body burn fat. So not only is it giving you all the benefits of boosting your immunity, clearing your skin, helping you do blow, controlling your appetite. I also added something to help you burn fat. So if you're healthy, that's exactly where you, what, what you want to take every single day to kind of help your body just do what it's supposed to do naturally. Amazing. And uh, you touched on it briefly, but your actual bottles and that process of getting your packaging and your design ready. Talk me through how you actually came up with your labeling. So I wanted something that was cute. I wanted something that an influencer might be happy to post or that you could look at and would just make you smile. Uh, my target audience 
I definitely, I would say it was women, but I tried to make it something that a man would have as well. And I actually have a lot of male customers. So I'm super excited about that. And I, you know, I worked with a designer that I had worked with before and I'm so lucky because I can describe to him exactly kind of what's in my head and he just hits it every single time. So I showed him examples of other packaging that I liked. I sent it to him and I said, this is the feel, this is the aesthetic. And it took me a while to settle on the colors because a lot of people were like, well, if you make it pink, you're going to alienate guys. And I was like, you know what? I don't think so. I was like, I really don't think so. Pink is so close to red and females are my main, you know, target. And I just, I just kind of went with what was in my heart. I, I know I could have maybe created something a little bit more gender neutral, but I just wanted to be something that people could look at and be like, oh, like this is cute. I want this next to my, you know, uh, bottles of boring vitamins, something that they might smile. So my logo has a little smile on it, which I, I like. <laughs> I think it's a nice personal touch as well. And it kind of gives you that whole happy feeling when you look at the bottle, which is kind of like what you mentioned. You want people to, you know, spark joy and health and fitness from your product in general. And I guess, you know, you've mentioned um, your product, you've mentioned your design. Talk me through your first sale. How did that make you feel and how did it come about? Before I go to the first sale, I actually forgot to mention something really funny about manufacturing. So my gummies were supposed to be bear shapes and I've been waiting. I have been waiting like three or four months and the manufacturer's like, okay, we're all ready, like ready to ship. And then they send me a message. They're like, Hey, they made them in all hearts. And I was like, hearts. And I freaked out and I was like, no, I don't want hearts. My website is bearable. And I was like, you know what? Ship the hearts. I was like, ship the hearts, just give me a discount, but ship the hearts. And people actually love the hearts. So what ended up being a mistake, people actually ended up loving. So, okay, sorry, that was it with uh, manufacturing. But yeah. but the first sale, the first, who I, I think my first sale was like my roommate probably, you know, because she was like standing right next to me. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go live. And I like went live and she did it without me even knowing it. And I was like, oh my God, like you bought something. It was so nice. But then the sale started rolling in and I was like, wait, whoa, 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 like, what's going on? Like what surprised me was like the people that I didn't even know. I guess I kind of always expected my family and friends, not expected, but I thought maybe they'd support me and I, I hoped that they would. But I started getting all these other people that I just had no idea from different parts of the country. And I was like, what is going on? So it was so, it was amazing. And it, it kind of solidified the fact that, hey, maybe I do have something that people really like, or maybe I did do it right this time. And um, you know, the feedback so far has been great. That's incredible. And like you mentioned saying, you know, you've, you felt like you did it right this time. What do you feel like you actually nailed more so than what you have in the past? I think I had to understand that you need a marketing budget. You know, you just, you need a marketing budget. And before I just kind of thought I had that old business mentality, like build it and they were, they will come. And I think word of mouth certainly does work. And if people really like your product, you know, I think that does work but it's not as apparent these days. So you have to be more aggressive in your marketing. And so when I launched this brand, I just wanted to make sure that I did have a marketing budget every single month. And I was focused on marketing because I really believe that that is what builds great brands. For sure. And what were some of your main marketing channels that you used to, to launch ACB? For lunch, it was Instagram and Facebook. It was all Instagram and Facebook. And I, I'm really, I think I'm a kind of a different case because I would, I'm considered like an influencer on Instagram. I think I have over 90,000 followers right now. So I launched to my audience and I was able to capture a lot of my audience, but I also have friends who are influencers and they posted for me. So it, it, I, it was just kind of, um, you know, a lot of people coming into my corner and were like, Hey, this, not only is this product good, but you know, we love you. We want to support you. So they, they were posting for me. So thankful for that. And also on Facebook, I got a lot of, a lot of sales on Facebook as well. Perfect. And, you know, you mentioned influencers and how strong they are. Did you see some organic traffic happening from people that were just so happy to have your product in their hands posting on socials? And talk me through that experience. How was that for you? I did. And actually what's surprising is I've worked with, uh, with influencers that have, you know, over 200,000 followers and then I don't get any sales. And then I work with someone who just genuinely loves my product and they have maybe 2,000 followers and then I get a couple of sales. So it's interesting to look at people I don't believe you need to have a lot of people following you to be an influencer. I think people have it wrong when they're working with influencers. When you work with someone who has a very big audience that works with a lot of brands, you have to walk into it knowing that you're probably not going to get a sale, but what you will get is really great content that you can use 
for an ad. That should be your only goal for working with a really big influencer. And with the smaller ones, you will probably get sales because if you're working with someone that has less than 5,000 followers on Instagram, they never, the people that follow them never see ads. So it, the, the trust is very high and not necessarily that it'll be an ad, but it, it'll be so genuine. People will believe it and they'll actually purchase because they're more likely to do that than an influencer who's forgive me, is like, you know, posting whitening, tooth whitening stuff. And they're posting all this stuff that's just like, you know, you, you look at it and you're like, I'm not going to buy that because it's, it's clear that it's a paid ad. So I think a lot of people, um, you know, they, they think, hey, I'm going to pay an influencer. I'm going to get a sale. That's really not how it works anymore. I think it did, you know, four or five years ago, but that's not the case today. At Founder, 99% of our content is free. Today's episode is only made possible by our incredible student community, from our magazine subscribers to the entrepreneurs enrolling in our course programs. If you are thinking of finally starting your own business, make sure to check out the exact free training that led today's guests to where they are now. Head to founder.com slash e-commerce training or follow the link in the show notes. Yeah. And I agree. I think it's definitely transformed. You need that sort of trust from someone you're purchasing or getting advice from to purchase something, um, especially when there is so many e-commerce brands popping up like you have mentioned. Um, and I guess you did touch upon ads. Have you been using Facebook ads, Instagram ads to also help you get a push? This has been a really big hurdle. So I have, I didn't realize going into the supplement space was going to be so difficult. So Facebook and Instagram actually banned me from ads like several different times. And it was because of specific keywords. So I tried to do it on my own for a month and I kind of was like, I, I can't, I can't do this. I keep getting blocked. So I had to hire a, an agency to help me work through those policy issues. And we're finally in the clear. We're going to launch our ads this week. So I'm so excited, but it's taking me so long. But in the meantime, I started to build a brand on TikTok. So I've had some success with TikTok. I've worked with influencers on TikTok and, um, you know, it, it just kind of drove home something that Greta with founder always told us that, you know, you don't own these platforms. Like she talks about when she made this, she built a really big brand on Instagram and then it got hacked and deleted. And that to me was insane because if you focus all of your marketing efforts and energy into one channel, you don't own that. So it's super important to build your email list and build out a robust, you know, chain of emails that you can send to, to capture and, and keep your customers engaged. And I think my product is one of those that eventually I would like to move to a subscription service because people just kind of want this delivered, you know, every single month, which, which I think is, is uh, really cool, but because of certain policy issues and red flags that Facebook um, and Instagram capture, I have to wait a little bit until I put that subscription service up because a lot of people have been asking me about it. So that's good. That is really good. And I think that's super exciting because that can also mean like longevity for your brand and people, you know, really form a relationship with your brand, which is amazing. And also like yeah. TikTok, it's such a great platform for so many brands these days because all you really need is like one viral post, one viral something to really get that traction going. And I guess, you know, what type of content have you been posting? Because I feel like that's sometimes a struggle with smaller brands or younger brands that is not too sure what to post on these newer platforms. So for me, what I've been doing is I've been doing some informational stuff and then I've been doing some like funny stuff. Like one of the, one of the videos that everyone loved was me like, chose, I just used myself because it was like the first TikTok video I ever did. It was like me chugging apple cider vinegar and then spitting it out. And then someone like handing me a gummy and me like eating it and being happy. So I just try to think of, you know, kind of creative ways that I can promote the brand. Like the next the next TikTok video I want to do is I want to grab an apple and kind of like throw it at the wall and then reshoot it so that, you know, my gummies pop out and like harness the power of apple or, you know, something like that, some sort of message. So, but it doesn't have to be something super extravagant or creative. You can just focus on informational stuff, like what your product is, what makes you different. I think a lot of people are afraid to, 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 to just put it out there, but TikTok, it doesn't have to look incredibly beautiful. It just has to be out there. That's what I think is cool about TikTok. You can, it's about, um, quality, uh, sorry, quantity, not quality on TikTok, which is, which is cool. It, it's something different. I agree. And I think also like it's a great way for now a lot of people to kind of have that um, relationship with people who own the brand. Um, and I know a lot of people like to have that connection as well. Just it helps build their brand from the start. And I guess we've spoken about new ways of getting your brand out there, but you did mention email marketing as well. How did you go about building your email list to begin with? I, uh, what I did was I didn't, I didn't do a really great job and I'm going to be quite honest of email capturing before. And I think that's where I kind of missed the boat because my product arrived 
two to three, three weeks, I think earlier than I anticipated it to. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to create this landing page and then I'll do this and I'll do that. And then it just showed up on my doorstep and I was like, launch, 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 launch tomorrow, do it. You know? So I wasn't able to uh, create that, but what I, I did have my website up and then the bottom, I have, I, I have a pop-up that comes up and it says sign up for exclusive discounts or something like that. It was something very simple. And that's how I captured all my emails. And I'm going to be quite honest. I still don't have, I have abandoned cart emails going on, but I still need to figure out a more robust way to kind of streamline and formulate that. I think after we get, you know, after working with my agency, after we get the Facebook and Instagram ads running, that's going to be my next focus. Amazing. And I, and I guess that's a great learning curve and it's something that, you know, it's great to establish now so that you can just keep improving. And I guess doing the Start and Scale course, has that helped you achieve specific results that you may not have been able to do without the guidance of Greta? I would say so. I think the biggest value that I find is the Facebook group, you know, like I feel like I've learned so if I have a question about something, I won't immediately post it. I'll just go search like, hey, has anyone posted this question? What are the resources? And it's so much better, in my opinion, to crowdsource and to just have other entrepreneurs who are dealing with the exact same things that you're dealing with and figure out how to help each other. So I think that group is so supportive. I try to comment whenever I can, if I, if I can bring value to the conversation. But I love that Facebook group. It's, it's so valuable because, and what's really cool is like Greta is in there a lot too. Like she'll pop in and in and out in the Facebook. And I think a lot, you know, I'm sure she's an incredibly busy woman. So it just means a lot that she, you know, is, is willing to work with her students in, in that Facebook group. I agree. And I always see you popping up in that Facebook group and I know a lot of other people value it. And I guess from taking this course and you launching and being successful, where would you say your business is at now and how is it performing? It's doing well. It's not as, you know, much as I would want to, but like I said, we had that big setback with Facebook and Instagram. So it's been a big setback because my main budget was going to be spent there. I know that, you know, that's where my audience is and that's where we convert. So I spent my first couple months budget on TikTok and I had some misses, you know, I paid some, some kind of big TikTok influencers to create content for me. And I thought it was, like I said, I thought it was going to get sales and it didn't really translate to that. One did one, one did an amazing job and I did get sales. But the, um, what I talked to about with my marketing guy, you know, it's always nice to have an expert in your corner to kind of work with. And he was like, well, maybe, you know, you just need a content creator right now, not necessarily an influencer, which is something different that I hadn't thought of for TikTok. And I was like, oh my God, you genius, you know? <laughs> so that I'm kind of shifting my focus there. But I think I would say the business is doing well, but of course not where I want it to be, but that's because we have a big chunk of our ad, ad spend that just was, hasn't, I haven't been able to do it. I think, no, it's it's a great that you you aren't, you know, projecting yourself as doing X amount of sales and this and that because, like, you do have a lot to learn and it is a learning process. And I think a lot of people listening, you know, they'll really appreciate that because it's great to see someone scale and make millions, but also it's really great to hear your story and your journey as well. And I guess there's another exciting part of your journey where you actually launched a second brand following the same process that Greta taught in our course. Did you want to talk yeah. more about that second brand? Yeah, so that second brand is Skinny Lily. It's a popped water lily seed. And this is actually a product that I've been working on. Geez, I think we're like two years into this project. Um, but this, so I actually use the exact same formula, the same designers, the same, you know, tips and tricks that I learn. And, but I've, what, what Skinny Lily is, is it's a little bit different. So Skinny Lily is more of a retail product. So it's not necessarily a direct to consumer, although we've done really well, you know, we've done really well direct to consumer um, on Shopify, but our next goal with Skinny Lily, since it's a healthy snack brand, is to move it into retail stores. So we want to be in Whole Foods, we want to be in Target, we want to be in, you know, in these small, healthy grocery stores. Um, so Skinny Lily is kind of like a different beast, but I still use the same techniques that I gathered from the Start and Scale course to help me visualize and launch the brand in the exact same way that I did ACV gummy. Like the packaging is beautiful. People love it. And again, I think it's a really great product. It's kind of like a healthier popcorn. So 65% less fat, two times the amount of protein, and it has antioxidants and nutrients that popcorn doesn't have. It's considered a superfood in India and each serving is under 130 calories. So it's really special. 
everyone that tries it loves it. But they're a little weirded out at first because they're like, what? Like pop water lily seeds? Like they've never had it before, which rightfully so. They're like, they kind of tilt their heads like, what's that? I always have to repeat it. But once they try it, they love it. And we get repeat orders with Skinny Lily as well. So that brand is, I'm really excited about both. I just can't like, I have too much going on, you know, like building two brands. <laughs> No, I can imagine it would be quite a handful and a lot to juggle, but have you noticed any significant differences about launching your e-commerce brand compared to something that you want to be in brick and mortar stores? Is there anything that advice that you might want to give if someone's trying to think of doing the same thing? Sure, I would say so. I think when you're doing something e-commerce, uh, there's there's usually education already out there around the product, usually, unless it's something that you just, you know, created brand new. So ours, for the... For the um, you know, retail product for Skinny Lily, what we need to focus on is education. So making educational videos, helping people understand and see the product, they've never even seen this in their life. So, so it's hard for people to wrap their brains around it. So I think if you were to launch something like that, you definitely have to look a little bit more educational focus versus um, like benefits focus, if that makes sense. Definitely. And, you know, with this brand, how did you find the manufacturing process for this compared to your gummies? Was it a lot easier? Was it a bit more challenging? It was a lot easier because I have a business partner. So with Skinny Lily, my business partner is actually from India. And I found the product when one of his friends flew over from India and left a bag of it like on his counter. And I was like, hey, can I try that? I love to try like foreign foods. And he's like, sure, whatever. So I tried it, fell in love with it. And then I badgered him for months to bring me more. And he wasn't listening to me. So I started Googling and I found out there was only like two or three companies that were selling it in the US and they had just started within the last year or so. And I was like, this is going to take off. Americans are going to love this. They ha we have to do this. So I pitched the idea to him. We went into business together and he obviously he speaks the language and he has connections with manufacturers over there. So we were able to, he thankfully handled that side of the business. Uh, it's, it's really cool to have a co-founder. I love working on Skinny Lily because we split the duties. You know, mine is sales, marketing, branding, um, social media, all that stuff. And his wheelhouse is manufacturing, distribution, you know, making sure that logistics are correct, finances. So it's really nice to kind of spread out the duties versus ACV Gummy, where I'm like a one woman show and I do everything by myself. Definitely. And I, and I think it's great. Like, like I mentioned before, a lot of people listening might be in the exact same situation where they're tossing up, do I need a business partner? Do I try this alone? How would you go, if you were doing this again, and you were starting your e-commerce store, would you be confident going by yourself or would you maybe look at an aspect of getting a business partner? I, I, I honestly like both. You know, I think I, I get the best of both worlds because I, what I will say though is with Skinny Lily, things move a lot slower because every decision that needs to happen, it's not just me, it's him. You know, it's our money, it's our investment, it's our brand. So we both kind of bounce ideas off of each other. So you really have to make sure that if you go into business, you've got to make sure that you really know this person, that this person is someone that you can trust and that you're comfortable honestly talking to this person. Because I talk to my business partner, we talk sun up, sundown, 11 p.m., midnight, 2 a.m. Like we, I, he's, he's, he's the person that I speak to the most of my whole life, more than my family, more than my mother. So you really gotta make sure that this is someone that um, not only can bring value, like look for someone that's strong where you're weak, but also someone that you genuinely trust and someone that you are comfortable spending a lot of time with. Because I think a lot of people, don't 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 go that far to to think about like what this is really going to take to 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 be to to go into business with someone. That's really great advice, and I guess it's it's a lot to kind of understand because yeah, you're right. You do have to speak to them probably more than you would anyone else exactly. in your life. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I'm tired of this voice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just no. kidding. I love it. I think that's uh, that's really great advice, and I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate it. But I guess what's next for you? Have you got any big ventures or anything that you're really focusing on? I'm guessing I'm building these brands, but I'm cooking up another idea already. But I'm like, Mara, you got to relax, like relax. You already have two. <laughs> but I feel like once you do it once, it's so easy to just kind of replicate that formula and keep going. You know, um, I, I'm always writing down different business ideas on a personal note. You know, I, I, I want to get to the point where, you know, obviously this is my part time kind of thing because I still model professionally as my main income. Um, I want to get to the point where I can just be, you know, working on my brands that that's, that's the point that I think I would be really happy where we're financially stable enough that I, I, I can do that full time. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much for sharing. But I guess, you know, working towards wrapping things up, if you could give someone like advice that you wish you had when you were starting your business, what would it be? Oh, you got to know that it's going to be hard. It, it's not all, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And I think what, what helps me a lot being an entrepreneur is I'm really unfazed by the success, but I'm also unfazed by the failures. So you've got to just move forward neutrally and know that if you keep knocking on the door, eventually someone's going to open. Eventually you're going to get through that door. So I feel like business, you got to have a great product, right? Do a market test. If you're, if no one wants your product, like you're wasting your time, do, do something else. Uh, But if you have a great product and you believe in it, you just have to move forward and try to give yourself a little bit of grace. I think myself, I'm, I'm really, I'm really hard on myself and I still am, but that's just characteristic of who I am. But I'm like, you know what? Like these were really hard. Like I launched two products, one in the supplement space, one in the food space, which are incredible incredibly difficult to do just just to launch like let's talk about the fda regulations and and everything that you had to go through to to launch a product and i was like you know what like i did do a good job so it's important to sometimes take a step back and give yourself a little bit of credit but also understand that if you're doing this like you really you really have to have a, a, a kind of a strong mental state and make the decision that no matter what if you love this product and it's good you got to keep going Just then, you did mention something really interesting is the hurdle with FDA regulations. Uh, Did you want to quickly touch upon that and how that, you know, affected ACV gummies? Yeah, so ACV gummy is very interesting because so for supplements, um, the FDA actually doesn't do regulation. But if you do something wrong, the FDA can come after you. Does that make sense? So they don't register supplements. So you have to figure it out on your own and you have to hire a, a, a label creator Uh, specific for the United States to make sure that you're compliant, to make sure that your product is safe. So you almost have, you know, self-regulation. So the way I think about it is kind of like, a lot of people don't know this, but amusement parks are are actually not regulated by the government. They're self-regulated, but it's in their interest, correct, to have rides that are safe and rides that, you know, don't break and rides that, you know, people love. So the supplement space is the same way. Now with the food product, that is absolutely regulated by the FDA. So they have specific specifications about, you know, expirations dates, like how big something has to be, how the sizing is very important. It's very, it's very complex, but to do that, I actually hired an FDA reviewer who has been reviewing products for years. And we worked on, you know, it's like a 30 page review of like an an in-depth analysis of of each product and and whether we were going to be able to launch it or not. So it was definitely quite a process, but you you cannot cut corners, especially if you want to go into retail stores, which, you know, I see ACV gummy and Target. That's my big, that's my big dream to have, have that product there, but it needs to be right. Like Target can't look at the label and be like, you mislabeled, you know, because that just ruins your credibility. And also you have to go back to the drawing board and, and, and kind of redo that. So yeah, it was definitely quite a process, but just kind of know that you do need to do that moving forward if you're in food or supplements. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I guess, you know, you mentioned wholesaling. How's that journey going? Have you reached out to anyone in particular or are you just waiting a certain amount? Yeah, so Skinny Lily, we're about to move into our retail phase. I actually have a meeting next week with my partner. We're going to discuss how we're going to move forward. And then with ACV Gummy, I- I'm not ready. I, you know, I-, I say that kind of lightly, but I'm I'm not fully ready to go into retail yet with ACV Gummy. So I'm happy doing direct co- to consumer for the moment, maybe four to six more months. And then at that point, when I built up more of a fan base, more content, more strong brands, that's when, in my opinion, I would go to retail. There's a lot of competition in the market. So I've got to make sure that I position myself, you know, as a respectable brand in the community before I approach a retail store, in my opinion. No, that's. No, that's, that's amazing advice. And I, I definitely do agree with you. It's, it's the smaller steps that get you the bigger wins. And I think if you rush into it, you know, a lot of people might trip and fall, but it sounds like you've got a really great plan for both your brands, which is super exciting. And I guess, you know, lastly, like, what was, do you think is the biggest takeaway that you've learned throughout your journey as an entrepreneur starting e-commerce as well as wholesaling? takeaway has been you don't know what you're capable of you know like when I first started I was looking at everything and I was like god like how am I gonna do this there were so many moments where I felt so like helpless and kind of kind of and, and confused and like you know I can't do this I'm not smart enough I'm not good enough I can't figure this out but every hurdle that you jump over you're like whoa like hey I did that like maybe I can do this so it was really cool to kind of see myself expand as as a 
as a, as a, as a businesswoman, you know, something that I've really learned, especially from my partner is the art of negotiation. <laughs> He's like, we want a discount Mara, 50% for everything, which is hilarious because like in my personal life, I just pay the price, but in business, I'm like, no, 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 like 55 cents. Absolutely not 52 cents, you know, <laughs> which is cool. So you don't, you never know what you're capable of. And it's kind of fun to stretch yourself and just dive into something that, you know, really never done before and just, you know, kind of push forward and jump those those hurdles, those hurdles. That's really great advice and an amazing takeaway. So I guess I want to really thank you for sitting down and, and talking to me today about both your journeys, both e-commerce and retail, because I think it will give a lot of people that are listening insight and valuable takeaways that they can adapt and, and do to their own business. So thank you again, Maura, for sitting down and chatting to me today. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you and both your businesses succeed to. And I'm sure I'll see you in our Facebook group as well. <laughs> thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your, Enjoy the rest of your day, Maura. Thank you. Hey guys, we hope you're loving From Zero to Founder and you're getting a ton of value from it. If you want access to the exact free training that led today's founder to where they are now, head to founder.com slash e-commerce training or follow the link in the show notes.